When I came to college and stayed in a dorm, one thing I thoroughly enjoyed was the electronic card access system. I felt that I was truly living in the information age. When I moved to a campus apartment, I was very sad to find out that I had to use a key when entering and leaving. Every day I had to suffer using keys. I also had friends who were lazy and didn't bother to lock the door. I missed the convenience of an electronic lock. If this were 2014, I would have bought an elegant solution like Lockatron or Kivo. Because it wasn't, I had to do this the hard way. Since I wanted to continue to use the technology I already had, I looked online and set my sights on HID's largest reader, the Maxipox. It is used at several locations on campus for parking and retails for $400. The long range allows drivers to scan their cards with ease. I set up an alert on eBay and eventually scored it from a junkyard sale for just $13. The large coil size allows it to read through the wall, exposing nothing on the outside. Next, I wanted a deadbolt that could be controlled remotely. This morning industry deadbolt was the cheapest I could find with a remote control. It is actually fairly complex with its own worm gear, microcontroller, antenna, and radio receiver, but all of that is transparent to the user. With a bit of experimenting, I found out that I could apply a voltage and the remote would transmit. The stage was now set. All I needed now was a microcontroller and state machine. I created one state for each permutation and two more for locking and unlocking. I made my diagram in Lucid Chart and fleshed out the transitions. From this diagram, I wrote the program to run on the microcontroller. In practice, the state machine works very well. It can even handle weird cases like this one. At home, the situation is a bit different. Instead of a deadbolt, there are solenoids. And furthermore, there are two doors instead of one. On the upper floor, there is a magic button, and when pressed, it closes a low voltage AC circuit and causes the solenoid pin to buzz. This buzzing sounded ugly. At commercial buildings, unlocking the door produces an elegant DC click. I did some experimenting and rewired the house. The end result was that now, instead of wasting time fidgeting with keys, the doors would click and I could simply push them open. This really helps when it's dark outside. To top it off, I wanted to log all entries to the internet. My first prototype had an incredibly long chain that proved to be unreliable and hard to set up. But with 2013 came the advent of the electric imp in Zively. This made my chain much shorter and much easier to program. And with the pin count so low, I could remove the Arduino completely. To make a front end for my logs, I started with a basic HTML page and just two div elements. From here, I used the Zively JavaScript REST API to update these elements to the latest values. I then used a little bit of CSS in an open source JavaScript timeline to display a history of entrances and exits, all in real time. If I wanted to, I could add a bunch of other features. I could create more keys for lockouts and for friends. I could have used Bluetooth 4.0. I showed that my lock used to trigger other devices. I will leave it up to your imagination.